Evidence now surfacing from the cargo ship that caused the Baltimore Bridge collapse. And in the waters below, divers search for six construction workers now feared dead. The communist Chinese regime's sabotage of U.S.-based Shen Yun Performing Arts appears to hit a new low with multiple empty bomb threats against theaters this month. Law enforcement officers in Texas are still not allowed to arrest or deport illegal immigrants. The latest on a new appeals court ruling and how the Supreme Court could step in again. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and the Disney Company reach a settlement. How the feud that started with Florida's conservative education policies is wrapping up. Credit card giants Visa and MasterCard settle a multi-billion dollar lawsuit with merchants. We'll tell you why in today's business brief. In just its second day on the stock market, shares of former President Trump's social media company are surging about 40% from their opening. So what's driving the frenzy? We'll delve into this with one of our news contributors. Welcome to NTD Newsroom, I'm Stephania Cox. A recovery mission is now underway for six people still missing. It's been more than a day since the Dolly cargo ship crashed into Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge. Our reporter Luis Martinez is on the scene. Luis, what can you tell us about the situation now? Stephanie, well, as you just mentioned, as of late last night, this is no longer a search and rescue operation. It's a recovery operation. Six people remain missing. These are the six people that belong to a construction crew that was fixing potholes on the Francis Scott Key Bridge before it collapsed. Uh, we know that from this six missing people, there are Mexicans, Salvadorians, Hondurans, and Guatemalans. Um, and, you know, the divers are right now searching for them. Those operations, those recovery operations uh, renewed early this morning. It's been raining throughout the day, so that's made the waters choppy and murky. On top, of course, the low temperatures and all the debris that must be underwater uh, right now. Let's listen to what Governor Wes Moore had to say about the victims and their families. Well, first, our, our, our hearts go out to these families. Um, they, they are living a nightmare right now. Uh, and so the, when I told them that we would, exhaust, uh, we would exhaust every single option for the search and rescue to try to bring them, uh, bring back survivors, uh, now that we've transitioned into, uh, into a recovery mission, uh, I promised them the same, uh, that I will exhaust all options to be able to bring them a sense of closure. We also know that as of late last night, the National Transportation Safety Board boarded the dolly, the container ship that crashed against the Francis Scott Key Bridge, uh, began interviewing crew members and also took the data recorder to begin the investigation as to what happened and why that ship collided with the structure. Let's hear what the chair of the National Transportation Safety Board, Jennifer Homedy, had to say about the investigation. Uh, well, right now, our work on scene, uh, and we have a team of 24 investigators, uh, various specialties, they are focused on collecting the perishable evidence. That is uh, all the documentation, including pictures and uh, components that we may need on the vessel or amongst the structure. Uh, to begin to conduct our investigation. With regard to analysis and really looking at the documents and digging into inspections and what occurred leading up to the striking, that will take a longer amount of time. We also learned that the Dali, the cargo ship that uh, struck the bridge, had had propulsion issues late June of last year in the port of San Antonio in Chile, where it was uh, delayed uh, for inspections and uh, safety safety procedures. Um, the, the bay, the Baltimore Harbor, is now closed because, of course, there is debris blocking that thoroughfare. So the port of Baltimore, the ninth largest in the country, second largest exporter of coal, one of the largest exporters of sugar of the Northeast, will be closed for the foreseeable future, causing imp economic impacts and, of course, businesses to divert their usual routes uh, through different ports in the Northeast. Back to you, Steph. 
All right, Luis Martinez, thank you so much. World-renowned Shenyun Performing Arts continues to receive threats of violence. The latest coming yesterday when a bomb and shooting threat was sent to their headquarters in New York. Police say there's never, never been any real danger. Chinese agents have targeted the classical Chinese dance group for years. The performance highlights China's culture and traditions before communism. NTD's Jeremy Sandberg has the update. A new bomb and mass shooting threat was sent Tuesday to Shen Yun Performing Arts Headquarters in New York. A series of emails obtained by the Epic Times state in Mandarin multiple C4 explosives have been placed, demanding a $58 million ransom with a Wednesday deadline. The email threatens to detonate bombs and turn the headquarters into ruins if the money isn't sent into a PayPal account by 3 p.m. Then another email from a separate account makes a mass shooting threat and doesn't ask for money. That email also in Mandarin threatens in the near future, individuals will sneak onto the property, throw grenades, and shoot everyone on sight. Another separate email sent the same day launches into an expletive-laced rant, seemingly upset that Shen Yun reported the threats to police and media. The email chides the FBI and exclaims the agency isn't worth worrying about at all. The sender declares they will keep sending threats and eventually wear the police out with, quote, the boy who cried wolf. The email ends by threatening, then one day a bomb will really be put in a theater. This comes after weekend bomb threats in California and British Columbia at venues where Shen Yun was performing. The threats prompted evacuations and police bomb sweeps, but no explosives were found. A Shen Yun representative says the FBI has been notified and is investigating the threats. Jeremy Sandberg, NTD News. TikTok is facing a potential federal lawsuit over who has access to users' personal information. The Federal Trade Commission is looking into whether the social media company is violating U.S. law regarding individual user data. Earlier this month, House representatives voted to ban the app in the U.S. unless the firm breaks ties with its Chinese owner, ByteDance. The law prohibits unfair and deceptive business practices by denying that individuals in China had access to American users' data. The agency is also investigating if TikTok violated the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. That law requires child-oriented apps and websites to get parental consent before collecting the personal information of children under the age of 13. If the FTC finds the company guilty, it could move forward in, on suing TikTok. And Texas law enforcement officers are still not allowed to arrest and deport illegal immigrants. A court is extending a pause on the controversial immigration law. NTD's Arian Pazdar has an update on the standoff between Texas and the Biden administration. Texas has been waiting for an appeals court to make a decision on its immigration law, known as Senate Bill 4. So in the meantime, the state asked the court to let the law take effect for now, as the case continues. But the court on Wednesday declined, instead extending a temporary hold. One of the judges explained the ruling, saying immigration is not the job of individual states. She wrote, the entry, admission and removal of non-citizens is exclusively a federal power. But another judge from the same panel argues that the state is forever helpless to control immigration if the federal government doesn't tackle the issue. The panel was divided two to one in Wednesday's decision. They'll have another hearing next week. Texas could also ask the Supreme Court to allow the law to go into effect. But in the meantime, Texas continues bolstering its security. Governor Greg Abbott posted these pictures on Wednesday, writing nearly 200 soldiers in the Texas Tactical Border Force arrived in El Paso yesterday. These soldiers will bolster Texas' ability to hold the line. And he recently posted this video showing Texas is continuing the construction of the border wall. Arian Pastar, NTD News. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District agreed to a settlement today. The deal includes Disney dropping a pair of lawsuits against the tourism district. The fight started when DeSantis replaced the Disney-controlled Reedy Creek Improvement District after the company publicly criticized Florida's so-called Don't Say Gay law. The 2022 statute prevents the teaching of sexual orientation and gender identity to children in school in elementary grades. DeSantis took over the governing district from Disney following the company's opposition to the law. Supporters of the entertainment giant have controlled the district for the past 50 years. 
This latest agreement ends nearly two years of court battles between DeSantis and Disney. Former President Trump's social media company is still surging in the markets. Shares are up 42 percent on the second day since opening. It's adding billions of dollars to the former president's fortune. So what's driving the frenzy around Trump's media's stock? To delve into this, we're joined by our news contributor, Mike Leon. He's a policy and strategy director for the Free and Equal Elections Foundation and the host of the Can We Please Talk podcast. Mike, Trump's true social soared 40 percent, as you, we all just heard on its first day uh, on Na the Nasdaq. What do you think this signals? Does this mean people are buying true social stock to support Trump, or is it merely just a good investment? Well, Steph, good to see you first and foremost. Um, you know, I, I really actually don't know because, it, it, you know, you look at other evaluations when an IPO goes public. If you look at Twitter back in 2013, the initial evaluation was around $26 and then all of a sudden it went up to $45 by end of close of business. And then the company was valued at $24 billion. And now True Social is valued somewhere like you just mentioned before around seven or eight billion dollars uh, i think it is a little bit of what you kind of said in terms of the stock price rising but there's been concerns from other people that are working closely in the markets that say hey this is a bubble and it could potentially burst as it comes down because as you dive a little bit more into the data and monthly users and what the platform has to offer overall from an investment standpoint it may not be worth that investment so we'll have to see the way this plays out over the next couple of weeks months etc but it looks like the initial surge is definitely tied into people buying the stock to, to support the former president. Right. And it seems to be working. You know, Trump's net worth has since doubled. His base is cheering this, of course, saying that what they call attempts to bankrupt him aren't working. But if Trump's appeal fails in the courts and he does have to pay the nearly half a billion dollars, how could this impact the pretend, pretend, his presidential campaign, especially considering he's using his campaign funds for his legal battles? Right. And, you know, you're allowed to use the campaign funds for legal battles if, if it's tied to, you know, obviously fighting, you know, a public battle like like he is fighting right now. Um, you know, kind of what you said a little bit there, though, Steph, it's that right now the, the former president is showing that he has different ways to be able to generate revenue. We saw this a little bit with the influx with, with the sneakers that were being sold and the announcement of that, what he's doing right now with the technology platform. So I'd be interested to see, again, we're going to see how this all shakes out over the next couple of weeks because the, the judgment that came from the Court of Appeals that happened on Monday was the $175 million has to be paid over this next you know 10 day period. So the former president said he has enough money to cover that. So he has to cover that first and foremost while this goes through the appeal process. This could take not only weeks and months, this could take years to actually finally come to a head where he actually has to pay the full amount of the of the settlement. Right. And speaking about, uh, you know, various streams of revenue, Trump has also just launched a Bible. Um, so that, that's another thing he's trying. Uh, currently, he's holding a 58 percent stake in Truth Social. If Trump successfully elected president again, will he have to sell his shares or can he continue to hold this stock while in office? Could you break down the political implications of that? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, we have precedent for this, not to this level, but back in 2016, obviously, the Office of Government Ethics had mentioned about, you know, look, members of Congress, other people have to die, you know, divest away from their businesses. And, you know, obviously, President Trump did not give away, but he had his sons in charge of his business dealings. And that involved all of the properties, obviously, the, the management of the, the golf courses, et cetera. So uh, he wouldn't have to but again, it's almost like it's frowned upon. Like you should, so that way it doesn't give the impropriety that that you can't operate your businesses and also hold the highest office in the land. And there's been folks that I've spoken to for our program before about this. And again, it's very clear, but it's not clearly defined for the office of the presidency. It's clearly defined for other folks that are in Congress that they should and not have you know family business dealings. And it's again, it's so it's transparent. So we don't go through this process of maybe somebody holding something over your head that has a financial implication. So he wouldn't have to at this level, but he should. All right. Good to hear your thoughts. Thanks so much, Mike Leon. Thanks, Steph. And when we come back, credit card giants Visa and MasterCard settle a multi-billion dollar lawsuit with merchants. We'll tell you why in today's business brief.
humans in Europe much earlier than people thought. That's what researchers now believe. New dating methods have revealed some ancient stone tools found in Ukraine. More about the tools and who may have used them after the break. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and I'm here to tell you about my new product from my pillow. Towels that actually work. Watch this absorbency test. Here's another towel that we randomly went out and bought. Here's one of my towels with the nice design. I don't know if you can see this, but you could line a swimming pool with this. I mean, this is crazy. Get rid of it. Towels that actually work. What a concept. I'm interrupting this commercial to let you know you can get our six-piece My Towels, regular $69.98, now only $29.98. Or you can save 25% on our brand new kitchen towels made with the same technology as our famous My Towels. Also, we have bath sheets, bath towels, washcloths, hand towels, and so much more. And the best part, with your promo code, your entire order ships absolutely free. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use that promo code to get deep discounts on all my towels. And for a limited time, your order ships absolutely free. Amazing grace, how sweet. The sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now. I see. They're just kids. Hungry, homeless, and vulnerable. Abused kids often feel safer on the street. Now, more than ever, that's the most dangerous place of all. Covenant House is rescuing and protecting kids during this COVID-19 crisis. We're providing safe shelter to thousands, but the need is overwhelming, and no child is ever turned away. Please call or go online now with your gift of $19 a month to help a homeless child. You'll provide safe shelter, hot meals, and medical care. Your gift will show our kids they're loved. Homeless kids are afraid and alone with nowhere else to turn. You want to know that there's somewhere you can go that's safe. So the Covenant House did that for us. Please call now. With your gift of $19 a month, we'll send you this soft, comforting blanket to show you're helping our kids. Please don't wait. In our national crisis, your gift is the lifeline a child needs. Please call or go online to safeplacetosleep.org now. Thank you for saving precious lives. France's president is promoting a new bill to support assisted suicide in the country. This has stirred significant opposition from healthcare workers' unions and health associations. NTD's France correspondent David Vives speaks with a family union president who believes the best way for end-of-life care is the support of family and appropriate remedial care. Earlier this month, Macron unveiled plans for legislation that would permit assisted suicide in France. Eligible patients would have the option to request a lethal substance, which they could self-administer or receive assistance from a volunteer, doctor or nurse. Several health workers' unions declared their consternation, anger and sadness at the plan. Macron has with great violence announced a system far removed from patients' needs and health workers' daily reality. Associations for palliative care, cancer support and specialist nurses said in a joint statement. Emmanuel Macron, ne Emmanuel Macron claims it's not about euthanasia or assisted suicide. He calls it assistance in dying as if it were an act of love, mercy and accompaniment. No, this future bill is clearly about assisted suicide and euthanasia. Macron's government said it consulted different bodies, such as an ethics committee, who supports the bill. 
But according to Family Union President Ludivine La Rochère, the president has already made up his mind. We already met the minister who has been in charge of this topic for the last two years. But it's clear that it's all a sham. They call it an open debate. But in reality, they already made their choice. Opponents also highlight the potential for abuse of the system and the need for robust safeguards to protect vulnerable individuals. According to the La Rochère, providing appropriate end-of-life support is the most important option. We can't leave people to suffer and despair. That would be terrible. I would add that the question of the end of life is really about family support. The way in which the last moments of life are spent has a considerable impact on the family and the way in which it may or may not be able to mourn. The suicide assistance bill will be presented at the French Parliament in May. David Duves, NTD News, Paris. And in today's business brief, MasterCard and Visa agreeing to a multi-billion dollar settlement and why some reasons why Costco hot dogs have not gone up in price. Here's NTD's Don Ma. Thank you, Steph. Two of the world's largest credit card networks, Visa and MasterCard, as well as the banks that issue the cards with them, have agreed to settle a decades-long antitrust case brought upon by merchants. Now, the settlement is set to lower swipe fees by $30 billion that merchants pay over five years. Now, these are fees uh, when customers make purchases using their Visa or MasterCard. Additionally, uh, the settlement would also require Visa and MasterCard to maintain the swipe fee rates that existed as of December 31st, 2023, for five years. Although merchants have long argued that swipe fees force them to charge higher prices, the settlement won't actually necessarily save consumers too much money, but nevertheless, it is still welcome news for consumers. And Steph, I also wanted to talk to you about Costco hot dogs. So prices for everything else feel like they have gone up, but Costco continues to hold the line on its hot dog soda combo. The $1.50 deal has been the same price since 1985. The price has remained the same weathering the Great Recession, the housing crisis, the pandemic, and decades-high inflation. Now, if the price kept up with inflation, the combo would cost closer to actually $4.50. Experts say Costco won't change the price because it's a loss leader. It loses money on hot dogs to keep customer loyalty high and for its branding. Costco's unique membership business model also puts it in a position to sell items at cost or even less sometimes. And Costco's hot dogs have continued to defy inflation, which has slowed considerably since the peak in 2022. Last year, Costco sold $195 million worth of hot dog soda combos around the world. Back to you, Steph. The U.S. Department of Energy announcing today that it's giving a Florida-based power company a huge loan to restart a Michigan nuclear power plant. The conditional loan comes from funding in the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. Holtec will get more than $1.5 billion to restart the Palisades nuclear power plant. The facility was taken offline in 2022 by the previous owner, due in part to competition from power plants using natural gas and renewable energy. Holtec is looking to get the plant up and running by 2025, potentially making it the first nuclear-powered plant to be recommissioned in the U.S. When fully functioning, the facility will employ more than 600 workers, with almost half of them being union employees. And an ancient stone tools found in western Ukraine may be the oldest known evidence of human presence in Europe. That's according to research published earlier this month in the journal Nature. NTD's Daniel Monahan speaks with an archaeologist at the Czech Academy of Sciences and co-author of the study, Roman Garba. The discovery of the Korolevo Ukraine site at a quarry occurred exactly 50 years ago in 1974. Since then, there have been many archaeological expeditions and excavations there. More than 50 test pit trenches have been dug out, and over 90,000 stone artifacts have been collected. The discovered tools were made of chipped stones, deliberately fashioned from volcanic rock. Primitive or very basic uh, uh, stone tools which were used by the very early hominin uh, species. They were choppers, cleavers, 
very basic cutting tools. Archaeologists have recently used new methods to date the layers of sedimentary rock surrounding the tools to more than one million years old. According to the research team, that is the earliest evidence of any type of human in Europe that is dated. So this is a big achievement. We have now very robust uh, uh, age of first occupation. It turned that it, it was the first arrival of people to Europe from Africa. Uh, we didn't plan it, but we were surprised uh, by the results. Uh, Garba says the team is not certain which early human ancestors fashioned the tools, but it may have been Homo erectus. The chipped stone tools were likely used for cutting meat and perhaps scraping animal hides. The researchers suggest the tools may be as old as 1.4 million years, but other experts say the study methodology suggests that they may be just over one million years old. That places them roughly in the same date range as other ancient tools unearthed in Spain. The very earliest stone tools of this type were found in eastern Africa and date back to about 2.8 million years ago. The Ukraine site is significant because it's the earliest site that far north, suggesting that the early humans who dispersed from Africa with these tools were able to survive in diverse environments. Garba says the site has thus far not been disturbed by the war in Ukraine. Uh, it is uh, a location very close to Hungarian and Romanian border. So the existing war is not, uh, it's not affected by the existing war. According to Garba, teamwork played a big role in the research. The scientists emphasized the great collaboration of experts from many disciplines, such as applied nuclear physics, geophysics, archaeology, anthropology, and sedimentology. Daniel Monahan, NTD News. Thank you for watching NTD Newsroom. I'm Stephanie Cox. See you tomorrow.